Good morning, good morning. I'll let people get on here and live stream. Uh, Dr. Pineset, the premium productivity expert here. And uh, today we're going to be talking about not letting people strangle your pre-med life away. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, we're going to have a special talk today. I feel like these talks are becoming so random based on what's happening in my day, but it's good. I think it's uh, getting us kind of a natural progression through all the stuff we're talking about. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the power of purpose this week uh, and kind of having your vision in mind and making your decisions based on that and let that be your guide. And today we're going to kind of extend that um, and talk about the people that are around you. Um, in case you miss it, Dr. Mindset, the pre-med productivity expert, uh, covering everything a pre-med might need from time management to study skills to personal and professional development. So today, like I said, we're talking about people affecting you. And this talk came about because I had encounter last night with a patient. I'm working nights right now. I had a patient. I got called to the emergency department uh, for a young lady. <clears throat> And I go down there and the report I get is that this woman is having difficulty moving her limbs. And I look in the chart and this woman has been in and out of the emergency department. She's 22, she's been in and out of the emergency department for a little over the past year for various injuries and bruises, and contusions and different things that are consistent with a domestic violence picture. And so she's constantly in the emergency department. I get called down there and she actually cannot move her limbs. Um, and talking to her and talking to the physicians in the emergency department, it turned out that uh, her boyfriend, who she's been with for a little over a year, uh, was actually strangling her and choking her. And he was doing it so violently that uh, he actually snapped her neck. And when he snapped her neck, uh, it caused what's her ability not to move into her limbs. And essentially, she'll be a quadriplegic for the rest of her life. And it was a crazy thing to see, to see a young, beautiful 22-year-old uh, woman who is now gonna be a quadriplegic for the rest of her life because her boyfriend snapped her neck. And there were so many emotions in that moment, kind of sadness for her and, I mean, just trying to picture what her life is now gonna be like compared to what it could have been. And anger at the boyfriend for choking her out and then anger at the woman for letting herself be choked out and, and all these things. But from that, I think there's a couple good lessons. And I think the first one is, if you are a woman, do not let a guy put his hands on you. Right? Don't let a guy yell at you. He does not love you. He does not care about you if he's doing those things to you. If you're in one of those situations, get out, get away, because you don't want to get to the point where you're getting your, ne your neck snapped and there's no going back. And I think the saddest part of this picture was that this woman had not pressed charges all these times she's been in the emergency department. And then last night, even though he snapped her neck, she still was unwilling to press charges. And it's just such a difficult situation. But I think that's the first thing. So for if you're in one of those relationships where there is any abuse at all, please, please, please get out right now. Uh, the second thing that's kind of more generalized to your life and to success and to being a pre-med is that often, even though we're not in an abusive relationship, we're in these relationships where someone is strangling the pre-med life out of us. And what I mean by that is it's one of those relationships where you have your goals, right? You're trying to be a, a pre-med, you're trying to medical school. And that requires a huge commitment and a huge, you know, time and energy burden. And a lot of people aren't understanding of that. And so when you form a relationship, you have to be aware of looking for someone who's going to be supportive of your goals. And oftentimes these relationships that, you know, start out okay. And these strangulation relationships, they come on real subtle, right? It's the boyfriend when you say, oh, I'm going to study and he gives you a weird look, right? Or he says some sarcastic comment like, oh, you're leaving again and something like that. And then eventually that sarcasm then becomes anger and upset. And then it goes from that to being making you feel guilty. You're going to go study again. You don't need to study again. You study yesterday or you're, all these things. And so it snowballs. And what happens is it ends up pulling you off your track, right? And you're not able to do things you need to do to be a fully functional pre-med and be a competitive medical school applicant, right? They're strangling the pre-med life out of you. And I actually had an encounter with a, with a student a couple of years back where we sat down to go over all of her studying and she was saying, you know, I'm working so hard. I study every minute I have. I'm doing all these things. I don't know why I'm not getting the grades and the results I want. And when we sat down, went over her study time, it was much less time than she actually thought it was. And she didn't realize it. But then the second thing we realized was that her study time was actually the little bit of time she was putting in was not being used wisely. And when we got into why it was, she's like, well, you know, I studied with my boyfriend a lot. And I said, okay, well, is he a pre-med? She goes, no, he's not a pre-med. I said, okay, what is he studying? And it turns out he's not even in school, 
the guy actually is working um, as, a, as a mechanic and he's not in school at all. So I said, well, then what does a study session with someone who's not in school entail? And she goes, well, he mostly just kind of uh, hangs out and we, we joke around and we talk. And I said, well, that's not effective studying because he's not studying. He's there being comic relief and distracting you from what you're supposed to be doing. And she said, well, I know, but this kind of what I have to do because if I don't let him study with me, he makes me feel bad, right? And again, that's that strangulation. She said, you know, it used to be, it was a big joke about the studying, but then it became a thing where he was literally hurt every time I would go study. And so now he has to come with me when I go study all the time, or he wants me to study at his place. And clearly we can all see, right, that from the outside, that's not healthy. But sometimes we're in these relationships where we're doing those kind of things and it doesn't allow you to prepare like you want to. And so she was in this relationship from high school. So for the whole first three years of college, I met her when she was a junior, she's going through this kind of relationship where she couldn't do the studying she wanted to do. And she was doing two things that were problematic. A, bringing the boyfriend in all the time when she was studying to distract her. But the second thing was we realized that she was, the reason she was studying so little bit, so uh, such a small amount of time is that she was trying to study in the gaps when the boyfriend was not available to come into her study session. And so she was like, okay, the boyfriend's at work from this time. I got out of class at this time. I'm gonna study for this one hour before he gets out of work. And so she was trying to squeeze things in and that was really affecting her. So as a result of all this, her grades in the first three years were really below average. Uh, she was in the two, so she wasn't a 3.0 student. And because of that, I was telling her that she was not a competitive applicant at that point. And she had a lot of work to do for her academics. And I stayed in touch with her for a while, and I don't know what happened to her in the long run, but I don't know if she got to medical school. If she did, she worked her butt off, but she really put herself at an extreme disadvantage by letting someone control her like that for so long and pull her away from her pre-med life. And so we have to, have to, have to, have to be aware when someone is choking our pre-med life away. All right? So one second, I actually worked the comments today. Hello, it's late afternoon here in England. Awesome, we got someone from England joining us. Um, so, and I hope he was arrested. He was not arrested. Like I said, she didn't press charges. Awful situation. Um, I don't understand it. But love is love, right? Love is blind. We've all been in that relationship that's awful and we stick it out because we're in love. Right. So anyway, so what